Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this video. There's been some discussions online about filtering SharePoint list data and more specifically SharePoint date or list data that contains date columns um, from Power Apps and the fact that that's not delegatable and with that comes a few challenges and if you're not familiar with delegation I'd strongly recommend that you go and read up about it it's something that might greatly affect your Power App architecture, especially if it's going to be run against large data sets. And by large data set, it's actually anything bigger than 500 records. Um, and yet that is adjustable. You can set that to 2000 records. But once you go into the realm of 2000 plus records, then delegation really becomes an issue in, in Power Apps. And on the screen you'll see the website that talks about the SharePoint delegation. And then you'll see that any comparisons that you run against a date formula, or sorry, a date column, is not delegatable. So with SQL you'll see that that's also the case, that any comparative operators you run against a date column is not uh, delegatable. But with SQL you can run, you can create a a calculated column that basically has an integer value for the date and then you can run your comparisons against that and that works very well. But in SharePoint unfortunately calculated columns are also not delegatable so so you could find yourself in, in a bit of a pickle. But what we're going to do today is show you how to filter data in a SharePoint list based on a date column from flow and then present the data back to Power Apps. And a flow has the ability to, to trigger OData queries on your data in, in SQL, sorry, in SharePoint. Um, and then the size really isn't an issue. Um, so then you can run uh, these, these filters on, on data sets of thousands of, of records. And that's what, what we're going to be doing today. To start off with, we're going to quickly create, or we created a SharePoint list, um, and basically we've created a hundred records or hundred list items for every day for the next 70 odd days. So there should be about six or seven thousand list items in this uh, SharePoint list. And in SQL terms, that's absolutely nothing. But when you talk, start talking about Power Apps and, and SharePoint, then you might upset a few limits, as more specifically the delegation limit. So we're going to be working with this list, and uh, we're going to show you how to have flow trigger this data in order to or filter this data and return that to Power Apps. Right. So let's open up a flow, create a new flow from blank, and. Typically, you'll need to use the Power Apps as a, Power Apps as a trigger, but in this instance, we're just going to use the normal uh, a button. Um, I like buttons because that allows you to test the thing before you start worrying about next steps and where it's going. So here is a button. Also, lately, it's easy to change the trigger in a flow. Um, a while back, you couldn't do that, and there was an issue. Uh, but now it's easy to right click delete and then it'll ask you what's the new trigger you want to use. So a uh, thumbs up flow team. Alright, so we're going to be looking at the SharePoint connector and you'll see that there are two items. The one is oh, actions. The one is get items and the other one is get item which hides away down here at the bottom. Now, get item will only ever return one item and it doesn't allow you to specify a query because you need to specify the row ID or the item item ID uh, in order for this action to fetch that record. So um, this will only ever return one and it doesn't allow you to specify a query. So we're not going to be using this one. Let's delete that and let's go and choose the other one. All right, so get items. It's going to ask me for the SharePoint site, so let's go to our test site. And it's going to ask me for the list name. And let's go choose test SP query. Right, under advanced options, you'll see it provides you with a field to specify a filter query. If you don't specify this, it's going to return all the data in, in that uh, SharePoint list. Although that's not entirely true, by default it's only going to return the first hundred 
records if you don't have any filter queries so what you might want to do is to go into settings and then enable pagination and then set this to a value that you'll know will typically exceed anything that your query would return so uh, the default or the maximum for this is a hundred thousand so if you know that your query will will never return that then you can specify that as a lower figure but for now I'm just going to keep that as a hundred thousand list items which is a fairly sized SharePoint list alright so in our SharePoint column or SharePoint list you'll see we've got a date due column this is a normal date column there's nothing fancy to this um, I can show you that in um, in the settings it also it there's nothing funny in this column it's just a date and time and in this specific example it's just set not to use um, the time or not to store the time so you'll see it's the date only although it doesn't really make a difference I've tested this with date and time and it, it seems to be working as well alright so going back into test SP query so we're going to be do this filter be doing this filter against the date due column so let's go back into our flow so we're simply going to say date due is greater than and then we're going to need to specify a date so in this case we're going to specify uh, well let's specify today and to do that we can go into expression and we can select UTC now in flow and that's by default going to return today's date or oh, that's actually going to specify right now so let's just go and put this in uh, single quotes otherwise it will not work it's going to give you a an error something like bad gateway or something that doesn't or bad, bad command or a bad command or file name or something like that that doesn't really tell you a lot but if you don't specify this as text it will not work it's as simple as that all right so we can say we want the due date to be greater than today um, and we want to, it to be smaller so date due is less than so that's LT and not IT um, as it might look like on the screen so then we can go and say less than uh, let's say three days from now so again let's specify the single quotes and in the expression you'll see there is a an expression called get future time and if we specify that we can say uh, two intervals and then we can specify what that time unit is so in this case we're going to say two day so that could be week month year um, and then it'll just adjust that time or go and fetch that time accordingly it's pretty neat it knows to use today as a base and then to, to calculate that going forward right so there we go and if we save this flow essentially we should have what we need now to just test that functionality and, and I like to do that to know that every step forward you're working from a stable base so you don't come um, at the end of it try and render the data in pipes this thing fail and you have no idea why so let's go and have a look see we've got items and uh, yeah there we go so we've got everything that's from today onwards and uh, so we'll see test one of one and if we scroll down to all of the data we'll see we've got up to test 100 of one right so it actually f uh, feels very a bit coincidence that it stopped on 100 it's almost like it didn't take the setting into account although it is set all right we'll we'll test that let's just go and maybe count these records so we know for sure and to do that we're going to use compose and just quickly write an expression so we're going to say we're looking for the length of the action called so action body of get underscore items and we're going to be looking at the value property so um, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail later on but it's uh, there's a value property or object inside of that um, action or in the body which we're interested in to, to count so let's just run that again it 
ran successfully and we got a hundred records that is strange so that means it's effectively one day's worth of data let me just see if I'm not messing myself around here so we're looking for yeah well I suppose that's right it's everything for today um, and less than two days from now and our data set only contains data from tomorrow so um, it's fine if we specify three days essentially that's now going to give us 300 or 200 records so that's fine let's save that again make sure that's fine test save and test run and now we're holding thumbs and there we've got 200 items all right so it was just my logic that uh, that lacked a bit all right so now essentially we've got a flow that's returning the required information and all of that is looking good one thing to note though is if I look at this data so if I click on um, that to open it up you'll see there's the body inside the body is value and then we've got a list of items and uh, you'll see some of these column names are really strange so there's odata.e tag but then some of these things also have curly brackets inside them so there's identify with a curly bracket and I've picked up that PyApps doesn't enjoy that at all so the moment you write the data into a variable then it's fine it writes it without an issue but the moment that you try and write this into a collection it tells you it's a bit of a, a non-descriptive error but it just tells you that it can't write it into that collection so what I typically do is go and select the data again and just make sure that we're using only the values that we're looking for um, it also speeds it up because it means that it doesn't transfer all of that data to the Pi app and then the Pi app filters it before it writes it to the collection so I like doing that and to do that we're going to be using the select action um, that's part of the uh, data operations so we're going to say we're looking for the value in other words the list of items that we got from the got get items and now we're just going to map these so we're going to say we're looking for the title in this instance and we're going to call the column name title and then we're also going to be populating the uh, date due and call that date due and then just ID is always handy so let's just populate the ID as well so now all of the rest of the columns in this set it's just gonna basically ignore and it's gonna give me a clean data set with only these columns uh, columns that Pi apps enjoy and it doesn't get confused with uh, curly brackets in the wrong place right so we've got that um, so now we're essentially ready to respond to Pi apps and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a an HTTP response um, this is a, a very handy tool in order to uh, you don't have to predefine your data that you can respond to Pi apps with you could really define it on the fly and flow and then Pi apps knows how to read this so this is a very very handy handy uh, trick uh, Brian Dang did a, a very cool uh, blog on this I'll, I'll also post a, a link to that thumbs up Brian thanks for that so here's a response and we're going to give it a 200 status code which means everything is fine and in the body we basically going to be writing the output of the select statement alright so that's going to give us what we want to a large extent and let's go and save that and then just run this again it's important to run it now and I'll show you why because we want to go and fetch the data that we get in order to populate the schema in the response to tell Power Apps what to expect. So if we go into the data, so here's the body um, of the select statement. It's nice and clean. You'll see it only has title, due dates, um, and then the ID columns. So we can go and select all of that. And then basically in the response, we can edit this and in the response we can go and upload a sample payload to generate the schema so you don't need to type in all of the, the fancy footwork to get this done and this basically tells PyApp it's going to 
define the schema for Pi apps to understand that it's expecting an array and in the array it's going to have um, these objects with these properties and that's going to contain data. So the last thing we need to do is just basically replace the trigger with uh, Power Apps, otherwise you won't be able to call this from Power Apps, obviously. And uh, basically that we need that's what we need from our flow. Let's maybe just give it a better name. So get SharePoint dates and let's go and save this. All right, so essentially we are cooking. Let's go into Power Apps and this is a blank power app there's no no data source or anything connected to this and uh, like always let's go and insert a button to just go and trigger something and see what it does right so in here we're going to go to actions and then un under on select property for the button we're going to go to uh, flows here's my get sp date flow that we just created and for this example we're not going to pass any parameters to it so we can close the bracket and um, typically you you might use this to to specify certain criteria to power apps and then include that in your query as well uh, but for now we're just gonna basically uh, keep it like this and we need to write the data somewhere so we're gonna say clear collect um, let's call this cool local data and we're gonna write it like such so there we go it's quite happy with that and if we go and hit alt and then click on this button it should take a few seconds to return the data and then we can go and view what it got so if we go to view collections there's my data set and there's my data so this only previews the top five entries uh, we can go and add a gallery to actually view the data so just do a blank gallery and connect that to my local collection just maybe have a title in there Okay, let's uh, specify, not the ID, the title in that label. And maybe let's go and insert another label because we do want to see what that due date is. So we can go and specify date due. All right, so there is my data. Um, it seems like uh, quite a bit, so just going to do a quick check to count it. So let's insert a label and we're going to do count rows and we're going to call, or we're going to count the rows in the local data set. So there's 200 records and if we go back into that flow instance or that flow history, you'll see there it ran for a couple of seconds and it got it's not what I want to check. It got 200 records, and I can see all 200 of those in Power Apps. So from here, you can go and add additional um, uh, OData query operators. We'll add a link at the bottom of this video for uh, for a list of these as well. Um, you can do a similar thing to with SQL queries, like we mentioned earlier. It works extremely well. And it's a lot faster than than SharePoint, so it's definitely the preferred way for for large data sets. And uh, thank you for watching. Please let us know if there's any questions or suggestions. And we're looking forward to the next video. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.